Welcome to Power Code Music. In this video, we're going to talk about the Insonic MR Rack 64 voice expandable sound module and why I use it. Now, this overlooked and vintage piece of awesome gear was released back in 1996. The MR Rack at that time, it was a beast <laughs> and it gave users great sound with 44.1 kilohertz playback with hardware that measured in at 103 decibel signal to noise level. And Sonic's new waveform ROM at that time had 12 megs of some of the best and bigger and fatter brighter sounds uh, that you were ever going to hear that that included piano strings brass voices you name it the company's second generation of their unique transwave technology okay used digital resynthesis that produced sounds that moved and transformed under your control now, the Insonic company may be long gone, but their legacy persists. Um, the MR Rack upholds that legacy because its sounds are still relevant today and still very powerful. Now, I use the MR Rack because it still sounds great, even today. And the unit's waveforms are fat, fresh, and unique. They always have been. The MR Rack has a sonic personality that doesn't mirror anything or everything else, which is one of the things I love about it. And it allows me to establish my own audio footprint in my music. So with this, let's take a look at the technical specifications that make this unit actually what it is. Now this is a digital sound module and the synthesis that it uses is ROM, read-only memory, and wavetable. It has two oscillators with waveforms again that are ROM and wavetable. The oscillator modulation is aftertouch, envelope, LFO, oscillator, and pedal. It has two envelopes. The envelope parameters are cons they consist of delay, attack, Decay, Decay 2, Sustain, Sustain Level, Release, Release 2, Rate 1, Level 1, Rate 2, Level 2, Bipolar, Free Run, Looping, Monophonic, Offset, Polyphonic, Slope, Triggered, and Time. The unit has two filters. Now the types of filters that it has are 24 decibel slope, 4 pole, high pass, and low pass filters. The filter modulation consists of breath controller, Envelope, keyboard, LFO, mod wheel, oscillator, pedal, pitch wheel, portamento, uh, ribbon, and sequencer. It has two LFOs. The LFO parameters are noise, sample and hold, saw up, saw down, sine, square, triangle, clock, delay, free run, and key sync. Um, it is 64 voice polyphony or polyphony. Um, it's 16 uh, voice multi timbral. The tuning is a tunnel, micro, and standard. The modes are polyphonic, polyphonic, um, and split. Patches, it has under RAM 128 patches. Under ROM, it has 128 patches. Now for multi-patches, under RAM it has 32. Multi-patches under ROM it has 32. For storage, it has uh, both internal and PCM CIA cards. And the unit can be edited using MIDI as well. Effects. It has four master effects with separate sin, a plus one insert and plus one stereo. The case of the unit is a module rack case. Then the size is 19 inches. It's one rack space and it's a full, considered a full rack space. The controls are velocity and switches. Display type is LCD backlit. And let's look at the audio output connections. Quarter inch phone jacks. It has a stereo main, stereo two, and stereo headphone. Audio output count is six altogether. In MIDI ports, there are in, out, and through. This is also a general MIDI unit. Let's move on to the sound features of the unit. The MRX sound finder function or feature makes this unit really easy to find sounds with. So let's take a look at how, it's, how that's done. First of all, press the sound button and its LED lights up. Turn the left hand sound type knob clockwise or counterclockwise. As you turn the sound type knob, you'll see different sound categories appear in the lower left part of the MRX display. Select a sound type category that you like. 
Turn the sound name knob clockwise or counterclockwise to choose a sound of a selected type. Now sound names appear on the lower right portion of the display. To hear the sound, press the audition button. A brief demo of the sound will play. Now standard sounds in the MR rack are collections of audio samples whose sonic characteristics can be programmed to suit your needs. Some of these samples have full 88 key range with a single sample. Others are grouped together with related samples that are carefully matched and mapped to cover the MIDI pitch range. Standard MR rack sounds are constructed from up to 16 of these waves placed on top of each other in layers. Each layer is a standard sound um, that is joined by a set of editable parameters and they can be edited together or separately. Various aspects of the layers in an MR rack um, may be modulated in real time or by MIDI control modulators. Let's talk about parts. The MR rack can play 16 individual sounds at once, which means it's 16 part multi timbral. Each sound fits into one of 16 slots called parts. You can select any MR rack sound for use by any part. Each part can have its own MIDI channel and provide options called part parameters, which control the behavior of the part. Part parameters also offer tools that allow each part to shape the sound that it uses. Let's talk about performances and what they mean in the unit. A performance is a collection of 16 parts. This includes all the sounds they contain and any alterations that are made to them as well as the complete effect setup. You can save performances to the MR rack's internal memory. This is useful for keeping track of sounds for settings for a particular song, project, or live performance. Let's talk about choosing performances on the MR rack and how that works. You can select performances in almost the same way in which sounds are selected. Let's take a look at how that's done. Press the performance button so that the amber LED lights. Turn the sound knob clockwise or counterclockwise to select the type of performance you desire. Turn the sound name knob clockwise or counterclockwise to select an individual performance. Performances can also be selected via MIDI. Let's move on to the types of effects in the unit. The MR rack contains a 24-bit effects processor. That provides a wide range of effects that can be applied to any sound. Each performance contains three types of effects. The first is an insert effect. Now this is an effect that can be borrowed from one of the sounds in a performance. The second is a global chorus, and the third is a global reverb. Now to provide maximum flexibility, the MR rack offers six buses to these effects. The first is an insert effects bus, then there's a chorus effects bus, a light reverb effects bus, a medium reverb effects bus, a wet reverb effects bus, and a dry reverb effects bus. Now each bus has its own settings that determine how it will use the effect or effects that it can access, um, as well as which rear panels it will utilize. Now parts can be assigned to any one of the six buses. The bus settings and the part assignments are saved with each performance. Let's talk about the drum kits in the unit. This is an interesting area. The MR rack contains a specific category of sounds called drum kit sounds. Now drum kit sounds allow you to save up to, or should I say have up to 64 non drum kit sounds assigned to individual keys. Now check this out, this is interesting. These are the most common, commonly drum and percussion, or I should say these are most commonly drum and percussion sounds, but you can use any kind of sound that you like in a drum kit. 
Now each drum kit has its own volume, pan, tuning, and effects settings. You can use as many drum kits in a performance as there are parts. In addition, every performance offers an editable drum kit. Um, these are called perf edit kits, which can you can customize and save them as a drum kit sound. Let's move on to a function, uh, or should I say a feature in a unit called stacks. The MR rack features an innovative device called a stack, which is used for grouping sounds together on a single MIDI channel. Uh, now stacks make it easy to create layered sounds and keyboard splits. Every performance has at least one stack, which is created and assigned to parts, um, which are designated stack MIDI channels. So stacks provide a number of improvements over, tra over the traditional method of splitting sounds to a common MIDI channel. Now bear with me here, this is important. Now in conventional um, layers and splits, a program change sent over a common MIDI channel um, would set all of the layered or split sounds to the same program number, uh, ruining all of your modified sound selections, okay, which is a pain. Now stacks are program change proof. Now this is how they are. The stack MIDI channel can also be changed with a single um, adjustment, sparing you the work of reassigning all the layered and split components individually. <laughs> like, thank God. <laughs> if you need to change, you know, any channel you want to use, that's how you would do it. So since the stack channel, okay, is a global setting, you can easily access stacks and ROM performances without having to copy the performance into RAM. Pretty slick. <laughs> Let's move on to the sound finder feature and how that works. A sound finder is exclusive to Insonic. It's an exclusive feature um, that makes it really simple to find the sounds and performances that you want. The MR rack keeps a list of all of the sounds and performances available at any given time. Okay, and then shows them to you in logically and musically convenient categories called sound types and performance types. So sound types let you view sounds by instrument family such as vocals and bells or other categories such as location. So the all send or all sound, I'm sorry, A, L, L, S, and D category is especially useful since it shows you all of the MRX sounds arranged in alphabetical order. Easy. Now, if you program your own sounds, um, you can also store them in the user SND or custom sound finder categories. So, performance types allow you to view performances according to where they reside in the unit. Let's look at how the MR Rack's memory works. This is important. The sounds and performances are stored in memory locations called banks. Now each bank may store up to 128 sounds depending on how much memory each sound requires um, along with 32 performances. So the sound, the unit is designed to access, access 128 banks and banks reside in the unit's internal memory or on a PCMCIA data card. Um, and in Sonic's own EXP series uh, wave expansion boards that were sold separately. So banks become really important when using MIDI program changes, okay, to select sounds and a performance. So each sound and performance is invoked um, within a bank select message, um, which tells the unit where the sound and performance resides. Now here's the tip. Um, to find the bank select and program change for a sound that you selected, press the sounds button and then view the upper right hand corner of the MR Racks display. Um, a pair of three digit numbers show the bank select and program change required for that specific sound. Um, now for the performances bank select and program change, press the performance button. Now when you do this, the performance display shows the bank select and program change information in the same manner as this, you know, um, as the sound display. Good to know. Let's move on to the ROM and RAM and how they work within a unit. Performances and sounds saved to ROM 
you know, read only memory, of course, are permanent and unchangeable. So these performances and sounds are always available. You can edit them uh, using the unit's um, part parameters and then save the edited versions into non raw memory locations. So performances and sounds that you edit or create and are saved to the unit's RAM uh, memory bank uh, are you know, of course, um, can be accessed and changed at any time. So performances and sounds stored in RAM can be edited, resaved, or erased accordingly, and that's random access memory. Let's take a look at the ROM cards available for the unit. The data card slot on the front panel allow you to add new sounds and performances um, to the unit um, with Insonic's uh, MRC series sound cards that were sold at that time. Now these PCMCIA ROM cards are inserted into the card data slots on the front panel. Now the cards and performances on these cards are permanent. Again, ROM, you know, read only memory. So you can use various part parameters to customize okay, them and save the edited versions to RAM memory, random access memory. Let's move on to the SRAM cards. The data slot on the front panel also allows you to add additional RAM memory banks excuse me, memory banks uh, through the purchase of SRAM PCM um, CIA cards. Now, this, these are cards such as the Insonics NC512 card. Now, additional sounds and performances, okay, can be stored on these types of cards. Let's talk about um, what makes this unit really expandable. Um, and the EXP series wave expansion boards are what do that. Now, this unit can be upgraded to hold more digital sound waves and more sound and performances banks with the installation of Insonics EXP series wave expansion boards. You would buy these separately, you know, pull the cover off the unit and plug them in, much like you would do a card on a PC desktop. And that just absolutely takes the unit to the next level, which is very, very cool and what makes this unit expandable. <laughs> Well, that is about it. If you like this unit, please give it the thumbs up and, you know, click the subscribe button on the screen now and join our group. We have new videos coming out every seven to 10 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Um, if you like this video, um, also leave a comment. Let us know how you feel about it. Now, while you're here at the channel, take a look at some of the other videos, listen to the music and let us know what you think about that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.